All right, let's hope that we get Karim fluently and we can we are able to watch him from where he is. I understand that the, um, his video wave is right here. It is All right, Karim sends me. All right, you can hear me, I think. Yeah, I can hear, but still I can't see. Okay, I, th I think the video shuts off by itself. It doesn't even allow me to uh, to turn it on. Yeah. Right. So I was saying, I, I was saying at the beginning, I think it's a video wave. Like, yeah. the, like uh, the internet you have is is only able to uh, to channel the audio wave. It's not able to channel the video wave. The video, I think the video the video wave is too heavy for it. Probably, but you remember last night we test, we tested it. We um, you know, it, it was it was fine. The video and the audio were working. Fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what do you think? Should we go on with this or? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so before uh, before you went off and we were not able to see you, what were you telling us about? You were talking. You were telling. You were talking about nineteen sixties that we are living right now in the nineteen sixties. All right, I lost Karim again. Ah, now you can see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, I can see you now. I can see you now. So it's I'm literally, I'm literally next to the router. Sure. There. Imagine, yeah, yeah, yeah. My okay, my router is about two meters from me, so I'm fine. So I'm you were telling us, okay, yeah, okay. Before everything went off, you were telling us about how we are right now in the 1960s. Like it feels like the, the times when we didn't have electricity, we didn't have internet, or nothing. So we depended on certain things, not on the government or you know, yeah. the, on our phones or social media. So the way, the way of communication back then was completely different than now, right? So, so now yeah. we, we, we are we kind of lucky. We have, we are still connected, but virtually, it's still a connection. You know, yeah. No, so it's not that bad to think about. We're just very used to, you know, because our generation, the the baby boomers and the uh, and all the generations after, we are very used to internet. To uh, we take it for granted that much because we are born with it. So we don't know what it's like not to have it. And back then in the 60s, 50s, people weren't really complaining because it, they they, uh, they they didn't have internet to complain about you know so so uh, it's, it's just like when you when you take things for granted for too long it's um you depend on it and it's true we we, we are very dependent on our internet connection for work for uh for family issues for anything we want for for news you know so it, it is how it is now so it's the, the technology internet it's um it's. I think it's a. What, like we say, it's it's a double-edged sword. You know, it can either be very good or very bad. Depends how you use it. So, yeah. But it's a very good thing. It's, it's a, I think it's a very good thing if you uh, if you know how to use it. I deactivated my Facebook, for example, for uh, for a while, and then when I reinstalled Facebook again, I didn't install it on my phone. So I only have Facebook on my laptop. Mm -hmm. Because I can't stop myself from going on the Facebook on Facebook on uh, on the phone and have it only on my laptop, so I can restrict myself. You know, so so yeah, just, uh, yeah. But you did that because you. I mean, you must have thought about everything before you go on to to, to deactivate your Facebook because on your Facebook, I mean, you have friends there, you have family members. Maybe, maybe, maybe you also have a certain business you're running there. So, yeah. before you go on to to disconnect yourself from there, you must have thought about like how it's causing more damage than it is bringing more positive vibes to your life, right? For me, it, um, my personal use of uh, Facebook, it's um, uh, I only use Facebook to check news. Know, what's going on in the world? Yeah, but I don't post. And I don't really. Uh, uh, I I don't comment that much. Maybe a few likes here and there. 
So it's not uh, a necessity for me to have Facebook. When it comes yeah. to communicating with people, I have WhatsApp and Fiverr, so I'm still connected. I, I can be reached via other ways. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you have a, um, a business page on Facebook. I don't know if it's still deactivated if you deactivate your own personal account. I'm not sure about mm-hmm. that. Yeah. yeah. Probably it is. Probably, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. The thing is, like, okay, like, look, like, there are like, there are organic groups. Organic groups. What I mean by organic group is like your family is an organic group because yeah. you get to feel and touch them. It's physical, right? Okay, things like Facebook, they are not organic. They are they are digital. So it is just like it has to do with um, senses, you know, not senses. I don't mean like human senses. Senses in the sense that is based on technology. So what, whatever, whatever people you're connected with there, they are just digital profiles. Even though your name is there on Facebook, it is still like, it, I mean, it is, um, it is your digital self. It, it, it is um, a photocopy of you, which is there. So it is, it, it is, um, I, I wouldn't say illegal, but it is sort of like an ego, inorganic group kind of thing. Because still, because right there, you are still connected with your family and friends, right? All right, there are then basic platforms like Viber and WhatsApp, but these are your personal organic environment where you give, because for someone to have your Viber, they, have, they, they, need, they, they, have, they need to have your number to connect yeah. with your Viber. But on Facebook, anyone can send you a request. Anyone can text you there without even yeah. being your friend. You know, mm-hmm. so it's mm-hmm. kind of illegal. It's kind of illegal for, for someone to do that. Because even if, 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 even when you try to like program your settings on Facebook to be like, okay, only your followers should be able to send you messages. No, someone is still gonna send you a message. And then there's a place for that, for those messages. Those who, don't, those who, those who are not your friends on Facebook, there's a place where they call it the uh, message request. Someone sends you a message who is not your friend, and then it goes to the message request. So you you still have to look at it. So it's in, it's inorganic. And then WhatsApp, Viber, someone who has your contact there, you have decided that they should have your contact. You have made the decision that they should text you whenever they want. So you somehow Im, uh, implicate yourself to this. You get what I'm saying? When you give your number to someone, you are basically telling them that, okay, you are able to text me whenever, even though they might want to respect your privacy. No, they won't do that. Whenever they feel like doing it, they will text you on that platform. But when we didn't have these platforms, Facebook, Instagram, um, Twitter, and WhatsApp, which are just like messengers that we have, because messages like we, messages, we use them to transmit messages, right? We had just phones. But the phones that we had were not mobile. We had fixed phones. Mm -hmm. So the fixed phone was placed on a specific place in your town. Maybe you live uh, in Ecosia, let's say in Solomon Square. And then the fixed phone was um, like two miles away. So you had to walk two miles away to make a phone call. But before you, before you walk two miles, you have to think, like, why am I walking two miles to make a phone call? So it, it has to be super important yeah. for you to walk two miles just to make we a phone call. Yeah, we didn't have this yeah. Like, it, yeah. we used to as uh, people back then used to use it as a, uh, as a mean to an end. But now it's yeah. a end to meet. Like, the yeah, yeah. right media, Facebook, Instagram, is the end itself. You know, it's yeah. Just, and stuff, pictures, whatever people are up to. But also, you know, you know um, social media and, and all this internet, it's pretty much uh, an extension, extension of you. It's, uh, it's your yeah, it is, it is, it is, it is. You know, and even then, um, when you have a smartphone and, you know, you, you need, if you, for example, if you want to go somewhere, you use Google Maps, but to be able to use Google Maps from where you are to go to your destination, you need to turn on your location services, you know, so so that Google can use it. So Google knows where you are, you know. Google 
headquarters in, in, uh, in San Francisco. They know where you are. And also yeah. same thing for, um, for who else? Um, you know that also Google has a Google board. Like you can download on the App Store uh, a Google keyboard. You know, yeah. you have your own Google keyboard, and so that can know if you type something on that keyboard, let's say on WhatsApp or whatever application you use. If you make a search on uh, on Safari or any other platform, any other browser, they will show you advertisements based on what you wrote in that Google board, Google keyboard that you sent on WhatsApp. You know, so they, they want to know what you are uh, what you're writing. They want to know your interests. You know, it's it's a little bit like a indirect spying. You know, it's um, of that. You know, it's, yeah. Think about it. Uh, it's not a communication device. You can say it's a spy device. <laughs> they yeah. want to know where you are. They want to know where you. Uh, they want to know your interest. They want to know who you talk to. They want to know everything about yourself. Which yeah. is, uh, you know, it's like that. So there's nothing much to do about it. It's, it's yeah. Cool. And people just accept it. You know? so, and I, I'm fine with this personally because whatever. You know, there's nothing much to. Uh, <laughs> what are you gonna yeah. do for me? <laughs> People accept it because it's free. It's free, but also, also there are applications that, um, for example, there's a messaging app called Signal, and this is uh, it's used by. Wait, you said Signal? Yes, it's, it's yeah, I'm about Signal. Yeah, yes, about... and it's very good because it doesn't track you. It doesn't it doesn't track who you talk to, where you are, and whatever. It's it's used yeah. by profiles. Also, um, what other, uh, I forgot what I was going to say now. Oh, yeah, some browser as well. There's uh, a browser called... Um, uh, Tor? No, not Tor. It's called Lion, I think. It's, uh, it's, it's called Lion. It's similar to Google browser, but Lion... Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm mistaken. It's called Brave. 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 It doesn't, it doesn't let any browser or any website track you. It doesn't track your location. It doesn't do anything like that. Yeah. So there, there are options in the face of um, the lack of privacy. Let's say. So you can still have privacy if you want to, if you know where to get it from. Let's say. You know. But the, I mean, they they can never be any privacy so long as you are not using something that you created. Because if I created Instagram. I mean, like Elon Musk, he bought Instagram, right? He owns Facebook. So his accounts on Facebook and, and Instagram. Um, what? Mark Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. Yeah, um, sorry. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg. And I said Elon Musk. Okay, Mark, this guy, Mark, yeah. he, he controls these platforms. So you can never know what he is doing there because everything that he does, it comes back directly to him. Yes. Every, feed, every feedback that the system that he created, they come back to him. So if he's texting someone, no one can find out what he is texting. Even, even if you try to like pirate or like try to like steal his messages or, you know, you cannot do it. But you are just using his platform. So he's able to see, watch what you are doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you, you, so there's no privacy nowhere. It doesn't matter. Even if a browser comes out to the end and say like, we have the highest um, level of privacy. We don't track you. We don't look at anything we do. Yeah, you do. We, we don't need access to your audio, to your video, to your photos. No, this to do it behind. This to do it. They have to do it because what? How do they get? How do they manage to keep their platforms up? Is by tracking you and then sending you. And then sending advertisers to you, you know, like. And also by, by being free, the fact that it's free to use. Yeah. You, know, you don't need to pay to have an Instagram account. You don't need to pay to have a, uh, to have a Facebook account. It's all free for you to use. And there's a reason for that. You know, they want you to use it. They want as many people as possible to use those platforms, you know. But yeah, you know, the, the world is controlled by major organizations. Facebook and um, Apple, Google, Amazon, you know, so it's, um, it's, it's like that. So, and, and this Corona thing right now is it will, it will, do, you know, it's going to affect many industries for sure. Yeah. 
touristic tourism industry and the response the most, I think, and also the automotive industry as well. But, but the industry that will be that will benefit very much from that what's going on now is the telecommunication industry and also the uh, anything to do with ICT, with the telecommunication, uh, uh, telecom operators, all those that will benefit a lot from what's going on from uh, this corona thing, mm -hmm. you know. So anything to do with the internet, basically. Yeah. That's yeah. How but I mean, you are able to like make profit out of this. When I say profit, I don't necessarily mean like monetizing um, or or any lot of money. I mean, you you kind of monetize yourself on this because this is this is what this plus these platforms are for. You can you are able to monetize your skills on them because I am sure that you as a photographer, right? So maybe you have had jobs. Just because you have a profile on Instagram, right? Yeah. You you use it as a connect connection tool. So I use Instagram for my uh, for my pictures, for my photography thing, to build a network and uh, to meet other photographers and models, make a artist, so that it benefits me. So for me, it's a mean to an end. Let's say. Yeah. I take more pictures with more models and all that. So. It's a show. It's a showcase uh, platform. Yeah. More like publicity. Like you market yourself online. You know, it's a you give an impression of yourself of who you are and what you do online. You know, and mm -hmm. like that. And also for um, when it comes to if if we shift to another topic, let's say if we go to photography, let's say photography has different kinds of. Uh, you have portrait, you have environmental photography, you have food photography, you have wedding, you have nightlife photography. So all this diversity, it's um, you create you create your own style. Everyone has their own taste and their own style. Also, you have your own audience. So you you um, same with for example with movies. Like you have different kinds of movies. It's it's for everyone. To, uh, there's something for everyone out there, and also. You can have your own audience, so that's why it's it's important in those arts, whether you're a painter, movie director, photographer. It's important for you to have a style. Let's say it's, it's um, yeah, aesthetically you can go you can go deep in your style, but you also need to be as well flexible. Like you don't have to be strict. There are no rules, let's say, in uh, in in how as uh, how how photography should be or how your style should be. Have to be flexible as well. So yeah, this that's uh yeah, I should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a shift. I mean, it's it's, all, it's awesome what you do, because I mean, I, I'm thinking like at some point, you know, like I, I wanted to do photography, but the equipment, man, there are some, mm -hmm. there are certain, there are certain, there are certain cameras that cost like a thousand euros, and then that's just the camera, and then you have to buy um, the lenses. Which costs more, ex which yes. is more expensive than the camera, maybe 2,000 euros for a lens. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm going to invest on this, but not now. So, yeah. I mean, when you go out to purchase a camera, what kind of brand do you look at? Do you look at the brand? Do you look at the prices? Let me tell you, let me tell you something. It, the most important thing is your own eye. This, it's, it's how you see things from your own eye. This is the most important thing. It's much more important than the camera itself. It's more important than the lens itself. I'm, I'm speaking to start with. If you want to start in photography, any smart, you know, all smartphones have cameras. So train yourself with that, and then and that's it. And once you get good enough with your phone, yeah. you can invest in a camera. But I wouldn't say to buy a camera right now. It's, uh, uh, you, you you have to be creative within your own mind, you know, before you can buy a camera. A, a, a smartphone camera will, will be just fine to start with. You know, yeah. You would want to invest in a good camera as a beginner and then a more advanced and professional. So, I, I it, it depends on taste, you know, Nikon, Canon, they're all pretty much the same. It's just a matter of taste and, uh, and brand loyalty, you know, all those brands. 
some people are hardcore Nikon, some people are hardcore Canon and all that. But my, my dream camera is a Phase 1, it's called Phase 1 brand, or Hasselbach. It's, um, Hasselbach is German, Phase 1 I think it's American, I'm not sure. And those cameras, they, they cost 40,000 40, uh, USD dollars. And what is the difference? I mean, what is the difference between uh, Sony and this camera on your dream cup and your dream camera? Because I, because I know somehow Sony, Sony, or we know Sony. Sony made TVs when we were young. We were watching um, TVs with a brand. You know Sony on them or Philips. Yes. And then Sony emerged to being a digital company. So they started producing cameras. So the first yeah. cameras when the I mean, when, when the era of cameras began, let's say three years ago, you had just Sony, and then you had Nikon. But Nikon is not, it's not more famous like, than, than Sony. No, so what is, the difference? what is the difference between your dream camera and, and Sony? Is it the lens? It's, um, it, it, I personally, I never saw face-to-face, uh, -face, a hassle but I never saw a face one in person, but I, I saw the, the difference in the picture. If I compare a Phase 1 or a Hasselblad picture to a Canon, you, the difference is huge. You can see yeah. the, 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 the clarity, the details, it's, um, it's, it's smooth, it's, it's everything. It's, it's amazing. It's, it helps you a lot in your work in uh, the photographer. You know? yeah. But it's more of an advanced, of an advanced state. There, there's no need to buy a camera that costs 40,000 or 50,000 USD dollars as a beginner or as an advanced or as a uh, intermediate level because it wouldn't benefit you. It would be a lost waste of money because you wouldn't be able to, to, to make it worth your time, to make it worth your shots. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's really an investment. A camera like that should live with you for I don't know, seven, maybe more years. You know? So, yeah. So, I mean, the changes, right? Um, yeah, uh, some of you are trying to say is, is like, like the 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 um, digital world changes. It doesn't stay permanent. It's like we have pixels. It's like we have um, HD TVs. But even if, I mean, even the HD TVs they vary. You can buy an HD TV for four hundred euros. It's, I mean, the images that are on the four hundred euro HD TV are not the wouldn't be the same as an HGTV, an HGTV which, which uh, costs a um, thousand euros. So there's a difference between them. There's always that, you know, that distance between them. And then also, like, we, last year we had some shoots, right? We, I, I, and trust me, I, I had a lot of feedback when I posted the shoots. And even right up to now, I have, I have a friend, she's Romanian, she loves this photo you did, like the one we did last time, like, you know, with the stuff on my head. Yeah. She likes them so much. And then but before that, when you contacted me and then we came in contact when we were conversing, I was looking at your profile and I was like, okay, wow, this is, this is amazing. And then you, you had a shoot where you had this girl, she was having a snake on her. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to have a snake on me. <laughs> because, no, no way. I'm not going to have a snake on me, man. So, I mean, how do you pull this together? How do you convince someone like, yo, I want you to put a snake on you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how does she, I mean, how, how come she, she agreed to have a snake on her? I wouldn't do that, man. I, I never saw a snake in my life before that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. And you weren't scared. Like, how, how, uh, how was the experience? Uh, it was a pet snake, so I, I trusted the owner. And the snake was, he was literally at home in the aquarium. So I could trust the owner and he kept telling me it's fine, it's a very friendly snake and he never stick his tongue out. Like, all right, cool. So I, I was, I felt confident in, enough in myself to just hold the snake and uh, it actually was very fun. It's a very nice uh, feeling that you don't get anywhere else. You know? it's, uh, and it's nice to see the comments from people. My mom is, uh, uh, my mom is giving a thumb up in the, in the chat. My mom. <laughs> anyway. Your mom is here? My mom is here, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, Jihan um, Sayun is your mom? Yes. All right. Hi to Karim's mom. <laughs> Welcome to our life. 
Enjoy our life. Yeah, so, go on, go on. So I, I told her we're going to have a, um, a snake. She was excited, but also she was also nervous. Because she, she, never, she was like, we never saw a snake in her life. But then when she saw me touching it and putting it on my neck, my back, my arm, she was fine with it. She, she took some time, some minutes to get used to it. Well, I, uh, it, it's, it's, it was my, my job as a photographer to, you know, to reassure her, to, to let her, and also to, be, to let her be with it, to let her take her time to feel comfortable with it. You know, because if she's not comfortable, as a model, if she's not comfortable with, you know, with the accessories, with, uh, with the photographer, then in the photo shoot, it will be reflected. It will, be, it will not go nice in the photo shoot, you know. So, and she, she liked it a lot. She, she kept uh, asking me to, to have it back again. <laughs> Man, nice. I couldn't. I couldn't. When I saw that, I couldn't. I mean, I haven't, I haven't done any photo shoot before where on the props or on, this, on, on set, they have to ask me, you know, to, to have an animal. There. I mean, maybe I can deal with certain animals, but a snake, when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. I've seen snakes before. Trust me, I've seen a snake. Yeah. Yeah, but like touching it and then feeling on your body, like that thing is just like crawling on your body, like it's so so amazing. But the the shoot you did was super amazing. This photo shoot you did. This photo shoot you did. I, I love animals anyway. I want to do more things with animals. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Because like now photographers are like, you know, like instead like because I, I think every platform has a message on it. So every photographer who is on Instagram they are portraying the message that Instagram is portraying. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So maybe, maybe it's just like portrait, fashion, you know, swim, swimwear, um, outfits, haute couture, things like this on Instagram. But there are other platforms where you can go and then you look at real photography, like documentations. Mm -hmm. Or you look at like certain cultures, this is what I like to see, despite what I do as a fashion model, despite yeah. being a fashion model or an, or an actor. I Most pages that I follow, I don't follow a lot of like fashion pages. No, I don't. If you look at my, the, the, the people that I follow, I follow more of people who document cultures, photographers who document cultures, because this is, 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 it is basically what I want to look at every day if I'm seeing something. But it, it, they inspire more. Because if you want to look at fashion, you look at it every day without ending. It is always there. But you don't get any inspiration from it. Because maybe you want to dress a certain way and then you want to look at the fashion page to dress a certain way. You want to buy a certain clothes. All right, this is, this is good. I mean, if you no. talk, when, we, when we are talking about something that inspires you, uh -huh. that's what I want to see photographers shoot. Yeah. Look, you know, photography as, as an art, um, same with uh, movies and all that. You, you watch a movie because you watch it for the experience. You know, you listen to music, same thing. You listen to music because it evokes certain emotions, certain feelings in you, you know, while you're listening. Yeah. This is the point of, uh, of, of, uh, of those arts. You know, it's, it's like a service. You're, you're paying money. You're going to the museum, paying money at the museum to have to have um, emotion, to, to feel in, to feel a certain thing. You know, it's a service. You know? it's, it's not it's not something tangible that you can touch. You know, by her. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's not something that you can touch. You know, you can't really uh, see it. It's not something physical that you can see. But it's, that's why it's not a it's not a um, uh, it's an experience in itself. It's, uh, for example, if you go to a class in, in university, as a student, I'm paying money to this university, but I'm paying money actually for the service of education I'm getting. If I'm getting very bad service, if the lecture is not good, or I don't have the lecture or whatever, it's not a good service. So I, I want to leave the class, or I want to leave the museum, or I want to leave the cinema with a good feeling, with, with something that that has happened there inside that watching this picture will be like, okay, I want to feel something. I want, I want this picture to make me think, to make me, to, um, to make me see things in a different way. This is how I see as a photographer. This, this is where I look. This, this is what I like in, in pictures. Right? You know? 
like I'm I'm fine with the. Uh, I love portraits. I, I want to uh, specialize in portraits photography. Mm -hmm. Because we are all humans, you know. We it's it's all a matter of um, humanity. Like I'm very interested in people. I I love people. You know, I love talking to people, getting to know them, and all that. So, photography for me, like portrait, it's um, it's a, it's a, I'm not good. I started with uh, being a landscape photographer, and then I switched to to, uh, to portrait, which was very difficult to start as a portrait photographer because. You take pictures of people you don't know, you know, and you don't know their reaction. I, I was shocked. I, I took a picture of a, of a random man in the street in Egypt, in Cairo, and he shot at me. Like he, he shouted at me. He told me, uh, "Don't take a picture." <laughs> uh, and I took yeah. a picture. Of him. He was shouting at me. Yeah, yeah. It's on my uh, on my feet. So, you, you, portrait photographer, you have to get used to be comfortable with. Uh, with people, you know, with, with the models, you have, you have to build this human connection. You know, it's not just about during the photo shoot. It's not just about clicking pictures and bye bye. You know, it's about really building a a relationship of trust and comfort with the model and the and the photographer. This is what the photo shoot is about. You know, mm -hmm. so it's reflected in the, in the pictures later. Yeah, there is much time to build this trust, this uh, this confidence. Because, because I can be sometimes introvert, you know, I can be shy or reserved sometimes. So I had to break this, uh, this ice, <laughs> you know, it took some, more, took some, uh, some years. Yeah. So you yeah. mentioned, I mean, the, I mean, being a photographer also has to do with like a lot of patience. I mean, you have to be patient and patient and disciplined, you know, mm -hmm. because, because, because the the output of your work that everyone wants is not because it's not something that you can judge or criticize when a client hits you up and like let's shoot you have to shoot them and then give them an output of the photo shoot that they want they don't want to be like judging like no this is how we want it and this is how you, you photo shoot it or you're the good photographer no 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 when someone calls you off you have to be disciplined yes so it has to, I mean, there is a certain like char characteristic of, 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 of being, like one of the characteristics of being a photographer is like you are disciplined, you know, you are patient, yeah. you, have a vi you have a vision, because you have a vision, you are looking at someone, it doesn't matter where their race, if they come from Africa, if they come from Europe, or if they come from America, or if they come from Asia. Once you look at them, you know, like, this is what you're able, this is the message you're able to get out of them. But mm -hmm. It has to do with vision, right? Yeah. But the vision comes through, uh, it's a combination, combination of research and experience. So yeah. The more you do, the more you, uh, you take pictures. It builds up your own your own eyes and your own experience, and then the part is looking is looking at what other photographers have done before. The, what what can you learn from them? You know how they use the lighting, the angle, how the model is posing. So you know research and experience go together to build your own vision. Yeah. So and also during the shooting, as you said, it's, it, patience is it's. Uh, it's very important that you have to be, you have to be patient with the model. With, also, you have to be able to improvise if anything goes out of hand. You, know? you have to be able to to be creative, you know. Yeah. So I mean, despite what you, I mean, because I know right now you you're still studying, right? Yeah. And is like. Because what you're studying, it doesn't have to do a lot with photography, but you, you have that mind for it. You have that, you have that, that, that um, uh, photographic mind. So, like, what is the future like for you? It's like, what is the what? Like, what is the future like for you? What, what is the future like for you? Like, what are you thinking about? Like, it's very difficult to the, the message that you want to show, share out. It's very difficult to make a living, a proper living out of uh, 
photography. You know? Yeah. It's, uh, it's very um, challenging, I would say. So yeah. it would be nice. I would love to, to make income out of it. But I don't think it would be a, a, a first source of income. You know, it, yeah. will, it, will be, it will be something of the start. You know, this, is, this is what I like. It's, um, also, when you, when you turn, it's very beautiful to turn your hobby into your full-time job. You know, a lot of people have done that. It's, it's, it's amazing because you don't feel like it's a job. You feel like it's still a hobby, what you're getting paid for. But the danger in that is that because the customer is paying the money for what they want to do with pictures, so you kind of um, you have to, to do what they want. You know, because photography, paid photography, it's a service. You know, it's um, sometimes you may not like what they what they want you to do or, uh, or things like that. So you just have to find the middle ground. Let's say. But I, I don't know at, at the moment. Personally, I like to do portraits, um, fashion, and uh, art-based, like conceptual, conceptual portrait photography. Yeah, I'm not sure what I want to be doing. Is I keep keep on doing what I'm doing with photography and see where it takes me. And see see what happens. You know, just build connections, build a network, meet models. Mm -hmm. And uh, hard work in the background, research, and uh, experiment. Sure. And then, yeah. you know, I don't know what. Uh, I, I couldn't uh, give an exact answer. Yeah, an exact answer. But uh, I mean, everything. Everything happened right now. It's like we are building the future. We are building like, is it like, it, like we are, we are building like. Is it in government for the future? Because pe maybe in the future, people won't de depend a lot on governments. They will, everyone will try to like free freelancing so long as they have a skill, you know? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't need to work uh, somewhere where I would expect to, to be 50 and then, and, and then have a pension and then go and sit home and then expect to be paid every month. And no, maybe I want to leave where, whereby. I have a certain skill that I know that this skill makes makes me earn a lot of money, and then I'm able to use the money to invest in something else. So I don't have to expect someone to take care of me when I'm 50. I know that what I did, what I'm doing right now, should take care of me when I'm not, I'm that age. Yeah, this is um, this is the difference between being a, your own boss, you know, and uh, working for someone else. In a yeah. Well, if, if you're an employee in a, in a company, if you have security every month you're getting that paycheck. Like you know that for sure. But as, if you're your own boss, things are up and down. But the, the reward in, in being your own boss is that you can have very, very high returns. You know, extremely high returns if you are your own boss, as opposed to that if you were working for someone else. So, there is some. Um, you have to play it. You have to play it smart. I'd say you have to. Uh, also, there's some luck in it, but also it's mostly it's mostly uh, yourself. It's, it's, uh, I would say like, don't become your. I wouldn't become. I wouldn't want to become my own boss unless I'm sure. Unless I'm sure it's going to, to 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 be okay. It's going to 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 go well. You know, because I don't, I don't want to have this. Uh, being your own boss is not easy. It's, uh, it's uh, you know modern modern times, you know, social media and all that. They they made it sound that entrepreneurship is, entrepreneurship is very glamorous. <laughs> it's not. It is. It is because these are modern words, and they, they they are like I call them word words game. You know, we because sometimes maybe we pay attention to a lot of trendy words like entrepreneur, like this and that. But like you don't even know what an entrepreneur is. Exactly. You, you know what it, you, you know what the um, the word defines someone who is in that position. But not everyone has to be that. Not everyone has to be an entrepreneur. Come on, I don't yes. know because, just because it's trending. But there are certain like in the words when people, everyone wants to be. Everyone wants to be everyone, like the yes. other. 
So maybe, maybe I, I look at you and you're a fit, fitness instructor. I'm like, okay, I can be a fitness instructor. But without me thinking twice, like, okay, can I really do it? I'm look, I have to look at my health. I have to look at my strength before I think about being a fitness instructor. But it's not, not because it's trending. And then mm -hmm. I want to post fit, uh, like photos of, of a lot of fitness on my page. I, I do fitness, but I don't post a lot of my photos or a lot of videos there. Not because I don't want to post it. It's some kind of motivational aspect and practice that you do because it's a discipline. You know, you have to wake up every morning and you have to do something to keep your body fit. It is necessary. If I post it, maybe it's a motivation for some other person. Mm -hmm. But maybe if I do that, maybe I am following that trend where everyone is just doing it. And then it, 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 it doesn't become a practice. It becomes a I do, you do. Yes. I do, you must do. Yes. Do this, you must put this. Yes. <laughs> you know, we go here, you must go here. Yes. And then yes. when that happens, it means that I am not able to make decisions on my own. I, can, I am only able to make decisions when everyone else is doing it. So it becomes a group thing. Yeah. So it means that I am lost. Then if it becomes a group thing, I am lost. Because if I walk into a group and then everyone is doing something, they are going left and then I'm going left. Where are they going left for? Where are you heading to? Mm -hmm. I don't question that. If I don't question where you guys are heading to, I'm exactly. lost. And, I don't and, want to, I don't want to be lost. And following others without understanding why, like you pretty much lose your individuality. You, you, lose, yeah. you lose who you are. You know, who you are as a, as a person, you know, like if you're doing things, if you're copying other ones, other ones work as they are, it's, yeah, you, you don't have your own, uh, you don't have your own style, you know, and uh, there's, there's no need in that, like copying is right at the beginning because then it helps you build your own style later on, but copying forever, it's, uh, or following others blindly, it's, uh, you lose your, uh, your, you know, your, your, uh, who you are as a person, yourself. You know, so. Yeah. Because it, it looks cool, social media makes it look cool, um, but they don't, see, they don't really see the, uh, the work behind, you know, what, what it takes. To, everyone sees the success, let's say, but you don't really know what it, uh, what it is until you do it yourself. Then, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. How's, how has it been to be for yourself as a model? Yeah. What? Come again. How has it been for you to be a model? You know, connecting with other, other models, connecting with photographers. You know, how, how is the ride going? How is the experience? Like, yeah. It, well, the, the experience was that I... There was a point where... There was a point in my life where, like, I didn't know where I wanted to be, to be, you know, like, mm -hmm. I had certain, like, I would say, like, not identity crisis, but, like, what, 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 what exactly do you want to do? What, but it, it has to be passion. Yeah. But I didn't want to use any level or words, like, okay, maybe I have to be this and that and that and that. So I, I was thinking for a long time, maybe for a year, two years. <laughs> so this is what happened. I, I was going through my own memory, you know, like thinking about my own self, like what are you able to do? What are you able to perform? What are you, what can you do? Not, not looking at someone else and, and, and following that and following what they are doing and just hanging around them, mm -hmm. you know, and perform, I'm performing what someone else is doing because when you follow someone, you just perform what they do, but you don't exploit your own self. So yeah. while I was alone, during that period, I started exploiting my own self. I'm like, all right, what, what are you able to do? But to, when I was able to think about that, I was like, I should think about what people look at me and appreciate, or what people look at me and say, like, this is what you're able to do. Because it also matters when someone looks at you and say, like, you know, you could do this and you could do that. It also matters. Like, those compliments count. So I, I mean, I took all those factors into consideration. So I just started, I mean, I knew I was dressing good in the sense that I could style, I could just buy something cheap. Mm -hmm. And when I wear it and then when I step outside, if I go to, a, let's say for um, a birthday party or 
a bar or a cafe, when I, while I'm there, right, I will get certain compliments, like, you know, your clothes is like, it looks good on you, where you get it? People want to, like, get information of how I process my clothing. But I was really, I was just buying cheap stuff. Right. And then the way I would wear it on me, it's not, the, it's not the same way someone will buy something expensive and worried because someone who buy something expensive and worried is like they want to show what they bought mm -hmm. they don't want to show how they are wearing it you get what mm -hmm. i'm saying if i buy um, an expensive suit an expensive suit and i walk inside the room i'm walking like you know <laughs> i'm walking differently but my suit yeah. maybe maybe your suit doesn't fit you so you try mm -hmm. to like portray you, you you try to like portray yourself in a different way but your clothing is not looking good on you. So when I walk somewhere and the way I want to dress is like, I want to show how my outfit comes with my movement and how I can wear anything and put them together and then walk somewhere and then someone says, this looks good on you. Even, even if my, my hair is shabby or I'm not shaved or my shoe is not good, but maybe my trousers and my shirt, they are straight, mm -hmm. you know, they are all right. So when I started thinking about this, I was like, okay, this is the thing that, I, this is where I can start building my own personal skill set, you know, like getting into fashion. That was the industry for what I, I thought I was going to be best at, good at. So I started hiring photographers. I didn't know, there was no photographer who contacted me and was like, let's do a photo shoot or you can model for this designer or this designer. No, the first thing that I did was like, I called a photographer he was nigerian i'm like all right i'm gonna pay you and i want you to take photo shoots of me mm -hmm. so when he came i used my own money i bought clothes mm -hmm. i bought clothes and i set everything together i styled them and i wore them so we took shoots this is how i was doing this is how i started i didn't i didn't get no client no one contacted me and was like chris I want you to be a model. I want you to model for me. I want you to be an actor or whatever. No, I started all this by myself. I invested in what I thought I could be good at. I was going to be good at. So when I spoke with this guy, we, we, we did photo shoots. We did maybe photo shoots. We did photo shoots maybe two times. And then again, I called some other photographer. I'm like, I want to do some shoots. How much, how much do I have to pay you? So I was just paying photographers to take um, photos of me. Mm -hmm. And then I was, at the same time, I was buying the outfits as well, by my own self. I was working and then buying my outfits and then and paying photographers to take photos of me. And then I would post them in certain places. So when I did that for about a year or two, I, I, didn't start, I started having um, an outreach. So I started getting people contacted me, contacting wow. me. And I'm like, all right, you want to do this shoot? You want to work with us? Stuff like that. So mm -hmm. that, that, that is how I started. And then yeah. the first, the, the first photographer, I mean, like the, a famous photographer that I made, it was someone, uh, you know him, Harris. Mm -hmm. I had been talking to Harris for months, right? <laughs> we have been having conversations back and back where we were like, he was like, he wanted to shoot an African. So he was looking at my profile, he was like, yo, let's do this. So I'm like, okay, let's do this. When I come here, we can, we can shoot together. So when I came, I told him I'm here, I'm in Cyprus, so let's do it. He's like, come over to my studio. I'm like, yo, you serious? He's like, yeah. So I went to the studio the first day. We had a shoot, you know? Mm -hmm. So I went back home, and then he posted on his profile, like, this guy is in town, Chris is in town, Black Beauty, you know, you can book him for photo shoots or whatever. And then two weeks later, Harris calls me. He's like, I have someone who wants to work with you. I'm like, who? He's like, Theom. Theom was, um, Theom is, is a designer, but he, he doesn't design clothes. He designed jewels for women. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was my, fa my, my first paid photo shoot. And yeah. Harris gave me my first paid photo shoot. Yeah. Harris did that. And I'm so grateful and so appreciative of him. And then when I went back home, two weeks later again, Harris calls me. He's like, I have another shoot for you. And I did that. I did that for another designer. And that's just how I went, you know, by investing in my own self. Mm -hmm. Not expecting someone to like call me or like tell me like you are good at what you are doing. No, I wanted to make sure that I 
I mean, I created my own foundation, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because for someone like Harris to, to talk to me, he must have gone through my photos and then be like, you know, this guy is good. You know, or before you, I mean, before even you, when you contacted me, I mean, you must have looked at my photos and be like, no, this is someone that I have a vision of photographing, you know. So this is how, this is how I think it should, it should be. You, if you have something that you want to do, you invest in that. You don't, I mean, if you're working, you invest in your own skills as well. Mm -hmm. you, you should buy the equipment and then set them, set everything up, pay whoever you want to pay just to build yourself. You build your own foundation first. So tomorrow, no one is going to tell you like, I did this for you or I did this for you. No, you set that up on your own because you struggled for it. Exactly. Yeah, so that is how I got into everything. And then ever since then, I had a couple of shoots for certain designers. I wouldn't, I wouldn't been, okay, I haven't been to, to a fashion show. I haven't, I haven't done a catwalk. That is something I want to do. But I want to do it in a grand style. I want to be, I don't want to do it for a small agency mm -hmm. or a small um, 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 clothing brand. No, I want to do it for a very big brand. The first time I want to do a catwalk or a fashion show, I want to do it for a very big brand. And I know it's going to happen. Are you, in contact, are you in, uh, in contact with any uh, model agency at the moment? Or are you just on your own? I was, I was at a modeling agency, but I, I, I had just like one job with them. With Boss, uh, they offered me uh, a job. It was about, uh, it, was, it was for Boss, Hugo Boss, just one. And then after, I mean, after months, I didn't get no job. And then during the time, during that time, I was getting contacts from people to come on work. But the thing is like, once you get into these agencies, they tell you like, you can work with any other person. You only get clients from us, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if someone contacts you, you can work with them. Why? Because if you do, and the agency and the agent the agency finds out, they might you might have problems with them. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So when I when I when I started noticing that I was getting more contacts outside of my agency, I then cut off my contract with them, and then I went freelancing. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, Harris. Uh, you know Harris. I shot. I, uh, I was an assistant photographer for him. We, uh, for Madame Figaro Cyprus for last year. I, I shadowed him for also for Must Magazine and Beauty Line as well. So I learned so much from this guy. It's, uh, he's very successful. He knows, he knows every little thing in photography, like the lighting, the, how to hold the camera, how to guide the model. It's very important, you know. It's uh, watching this guy at work, you know, observing him, you know. So it was an amazing experience last year. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very good. Actually, today is his birthday. You know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I know today is his birthday. Yeah, I saw that on, on, on a friend's story yeah. that I saw this his birthday. Yeah. Do a, shoot another one as well. You know, maybe with uh, with uh, with some with some animal. Let's see. Yeah, we spoke about that. I remember you were telling me like you you hit this um. Um, other model or whenever you're gonna do a photo shoot. I'm down for it, man. Look, I'm down for it. The thing is, like, I, I, I am. A, I don't really want to work to earn something. Even though what you're doing, you have to earn for it. You know, you have to get a certain reward for it. But, yeah. but to me, it's not like this. It's like if someone, you see, if a photographer or, or a fashion designer or a clothing designer want to work, we can do it. We can both work together in the sense that we both benefit without paying each other. You bring your clothes, mm -hmm. I bring my body, mm -hmm. we shoot, you give my photos, and then you have your own photos with your clothes. So you benefit more from me than I do. But I've, I've, had, I've had problems in the past where I've been called to shoot and I wasn't paid for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I wasn't paid for it, but it, just, it still wasn't a major issue. Why? Because I didn't look at it, money, money didn't come first. I wasn't like, all right, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna earn some money out of this. No, it was like I'm I'm going for something that I love, man. I love to stand mm -hmm. in front of the camera. That's what mm -hmm. I do. And mm -hmm. I know that I do it good. You know? It's like yeah, acting. Yeah. When you go, if you if, if you go to act the, um to act a movie, they call you because they know you're a good actor. Yes. Yeah. I, so I acted some before, right? yeah. 
if you know or, or you don't know, I don't know. I, I hated the experience of acting. I acted I acted in uh, in I, I acted in Cyprus. I also acted in Egypt in some uh, short movies. In Cyprus, I did some uh, TV ads, and I didn't like the experience for myself. It's, uh, I'm, I'm not good in front of the, I'm not natural in front of the camera. I rather, but this is how actually, this is how I started as in photography, because I, I never knew I would enjoy being a photographer until a friend, a friend of mine about 11 years ago, he was a, uh, he is a movie director and he wanted an actor. And because it was a zero budget movie, so he was also acting in it. While he was acting, I was the one holding the camera. And he told me how to hold the camera and uh, he told me a few, he taught me basically how to, to take pictures and how to, to turn a movie. So, and I, and I found that I enjoyed it. You know, I really enjoyed that process more than being in front of the camera as an actor. And then later on, I, I started being taking pictures with my phone, and then later on, with uh, I took it more seriously. With the, yeah. Uh, so, if it wasn't because of acting, I, I don't think I would be photographing right now. You know. Like, yeah. 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 So that's, that's how it went. But, yeah. but I, I hear that because my father as well was. Uh, he enjoyed photography a lot. He had cameras, you know, like back in the 50s, 60s, the 70s, sorry, uh, 70s. You know, he had those uh, uh, analog cameras, you know, with the film and all that, uh, and Polaroids. So he, he enjoyed taking pictures as well. So I, I think I must have taken this uh, from him, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's... yeah. so I mean, that that's basically... It's, it's still an experience because you you get to grow with experiences. Without experiences, you will, you will, you will not know how to move, how to take a next move. You know, like chess. If you, if you don't experience death or violence or crisis or chaos, you won't know how to move. Because if you stay in a comfort place, it, you will you will live in a comfort place. Mm -hmm. But we are not in a comfort world, though the world has certain comforts. But to get the comfort in the world, you have to earn it. You have to like move. You have to make certain moves for it, you know. Yeah. But to, if it, those moves that you are making are risky. You're putting yeah. your life in risk, you know. Yeah. But you have to do it. You have to do it not, not because this is how the world is set up and the system is set up, but because your life is not just based on comfort. You, you cannot just sit and wait for everything. You have to move as well. You just have to move. It doesn't matter if it's going to be cool or bad. Just move. Yeah. yeah. You just have to move. So that's it, man. So right now we have one minute for 40 seconds. That's what he's telling me on Instagram. So Karim, man, nice talking to you, brother. I'm grateful Thank that you. I mean, your mom came live. I mean, that, <laughs> that was so, that was awesome. We had a lot of people live. Thanks for everyone watching. Thank you, man. Thank you for this uh, live. It was very nice. Man. Thank you. Man. No, thank you so much. It was very live. It's always, it's always great talking to you, man. It's always great talking to you. And I would love to do it sometime again because I know, yeah. like, we, I, I know, like, right now we, we, we have time, but even though we are, we are home, we are quite, I mean, we are still working a lot, you know, because right now you're working on everything that you want to work on, your personal projects, you're focusing on, on, on everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, so, we we in contact for, uh, you know, when all the lockdown goes down, it's, it's uh, all the yeah. off, we, we will do something. We will, uh, you know, we'll be in contact. Also, yeah. you see, we to move to Limassol soon, you know. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, sure. Because wow. everything, yeah, yeah, because, okay, what I'm doing right now, I want it to be much more bigger. But, all right, I, I, I just started it because, like, it's like a test, you know. I go, I put myself in a battle on my own. And then I test myself, and then I see how it goes. So it's going to be much more bigger, and then we will see how it goes. If the platform, if the platform goes bigger, I will make it as a podcast, a cool. live podcast. And then I'm going to create more, more platform, maybe on Facebook and a website for it. So this yeah. is how it's going to be. Mm -hmm. So like, thanks, man. Thanks so much for talking. You know, you know.
Take care, man. Thank you. Yeah, you too. Good night, bro.